ยินดีต้อนรับกับเข้าสู่งานของเรานะคะ Welcome back ค่ะเอาล่ะนิดนึงดีกว่าทุกท่านค่ะปรบมือสองครั้งค่ะโอ้โหขนาดยังไม่ตั้งตัวนะเสียงดังขนาดนี้งั้นเอาใหม่สามครั้งค่ะไหนใครคิดว่าวันนี้เนี่ยงานประชุมของเรามีความรู้ได้ความรู้ดีๆมากมายเลยขอเสียงปรบมือดังๆยาวๆเลยโอ้โหอย่างนี้อาจารย์ทุกท่านปลื้มใจแย่เลยนะคะเอาล่ะวันนี้นะคะเรายังมีอีกสามหัวข้อด้วยกันนะคะ so uh, we still have three more topics for you for the first topic ladies and gentlemen as we need to take a deep care of people with all the symptoms w e r e v e r right so Pharmacogenomic studies of drug metabolism enzyme and transporter genes in autism is very helpful for us all to improve the efficiency of the treatment in the autistic patients, of course. But how helpful is this? This gentleman will tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sadiq Medazi, Pharmacogenomics Laboratory, Department of Pathology, Faculty of Medicine, Rama t i p a d i Hospital, m a h i d o n University, who has been doing research in pharmacogenomics of DMET in autistic patients. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome Dr. s a d i f m e d a z i on the stage, please. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Okay, we have clapped enough. As the earlier presenter, she said that presentation after lunch is difficult, but after snacks, It's even more difficult, okay? So, let us do something, right? I'm going to let this beautiful girl over here write something, and she will fold the paper and she will pass around. You just stand, pass, 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 okay? At some point between the presentation, I'll ask this paper back, and you'll understand why I did this at that time. Okay, back to the stage. Okay, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm pretty privileged and humbled to be presenting over here in this incredible audience from different background and different expertise in the field of research. Uh, are you ready? Okay. Still, there are some of people eating snacks. Okay, I'm going to give you some topics. To talk around while you eat your snacks, okay? What happened last week? Portugal, they won Euro 2016, okay? Ah, Britain, they exited from the European Union, and now this guy he resigned as prime minister, and this lady Theresa May is the new prime minister of England, the only second female prime minister, okay? And The Hague Tribunal, they ruled against China, claiming the whole of South China Sea. It means it's a win for Philippines. You can discuss about these things for some time, but on a serious note, let us get back again. Uh, uh, basically, I am representing the division of. Pharmacogenomics and Personalized Medicine at r a m a t i b o d i Hospital, and I will be talking about the pharmacogenomic study in DMET, that is drug metabolizing enzyme and transporter genes, and the patient I have or we our group have selected is the autistic Thai population. So basically, outline it's pretty really simple. My presentation is not going to include all those data, statistical values, graphs, and all those things. Okay, it's rather just going to be a headline. I'll just give you the headlines, and you just skip it out. I promise that I won't let you sleep. If you sleep, okay. The first, I'll discuss about the pharmacogenomics in autistic autism spectrum disorder, and basically focusing on drug metabolizing enzyme. And transporters. Now, DSM-5. You see, when they updated the DSM-4, now they kept like PDD-NOS, that means pervasive development disorder, or 
autistic disorder and Asperger's disorder into the same, under the same umbrella of autism spectrum disorder. So I don't want to go into deep detail about the pathological condition of autism over here, but one thing is that, as you know, that autism cannot be treated, but there are certain symptoms that can be relieved by the use of drugs. For example, irritation, right, aggressive, that's what the clinicians usually prescribe medicines for the like antipsychotic drugs to treat those symptoms. At the moment, risperidone and aripiprazole, these are the only two drugs that has been FDA approved. And in Thailand, usually the clinicians, they prescribe risperidone as the uh, main drug to improve the irritations and aggressiveness in the autistic population. And for the risperidone, I know most of you are pharmacists, are linked with the medical science, so you must have known that basic pharmacokinetics of risperidone, like it's mainly metabolized by CYP26 enzyme, and the transporter is ABCB1, is the main substrate, right? Uh, so in my further presentation, I will just talk about the risperidone and what our lab, the division of pharmacogenomics and personalized medicine at Ramathibodi have performed in this case. Because, you see, risperidone is not a cure for autism spectrum disorder. What you have to think or take in mind is the adverse effects related to it. Because, you see, if you cannot treat a disease, there is no point in giving a pharmacotherapeutic intervention. Because with the use of risperidone, you might get hormonal disbalance like increase in prolactin, like metabolic disorder, or extrapyramidal syndromes, you see? So, our group, back in 2015, what we found when we studied the autistic population is that the hyperprolactinemia was found with the risperidone doses. I mean like, when there were higher doses of risperidone, there was, they were related with the hyperprolactinemia. And for the risperidone, you know, when it's metabolized to its metabolite, 9-hydroxyrisperidone, it is active as well. You see, 9-hydroxyrisperidone and its uh, parent compound, risperidone, they are both active. So, again, 9-hydroxyrisperidone the level of the 9-hydroxyrisperidone was again found to be associated with hyperprolactinemia in the Thai autistic children. So, moving forward, back in 2011, the Dutch pharmacogenetics working group, like, they sent a guideline to be cautious while prescribing risperidone. For example, for the patients with CYP2D6 poor metabolizers, intermediate metabolizers, or ultra rapid metabolizers. However, in the Thai population, mostly we there are like intermediate metabolizers. So our group, we again, what we did is that we studied the impact of the CYP2D6 polymorphism on the plasma level of risperidone and 9-hydroxyrisperidone. Yes. We found some of the markers, genetic markers, which has significant influence on the level of risperidone. And again, it was similarly confirmed recently by another uh, technique with a larger number of genetic markers. And over here, but we did not find association between CYP2 D6 with the prolactin response. However, we did find association between the dopamine receptor genetic variant. So, however, this is the pharmacodynamic part, so I will not go into that because basically my focus is on pharmacokinetic part. You see, the majority of pharmacogenomic drug levels that refer to genes encoding phase one and phase two enzymes. But 
did you forget transporters? You see, transporters, they are one of the major factor families in the determining the pharmacokinetic parameters. They play a very big role. There are basically two drug transporter families, ATP binding cassette ABC transporters and solute and solid carrier transporters. So, and basically the focus of the research has only been performed only in these few families. Why? Because the researchers, they are very biased, you see? I, you, or other researchers, we only perform such research where we can assume that, okay, we are going to get this result, so we, we are going to do this one. But in fact, that's not a healthy research, in my opinion. Because you see, biology is very complex. It does not mean that if you have a pathway related with one drug, that's the major thing you have to study. No. A single enzyme does not regulate your whole body, or a single transporter does not regulate your whole transport system in your body. Everything is connected. So that's why. We decided to, to go on a larger amount. We decided to study on 231 pharmacokinetic genes involved with all the absorption, distribution, whatever the metabolism. And, and recently, we published one, the prevalence of all the significant genetic markers in the Thai autistic children. So if you want to perform the further research, you can just look at our paper and carry on ahead. Okay, that was the first part over here. Still with me? Right? I don't want to kill you by my PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, now, what drug, drug transporters really do? You see? It's like this slide should answer the question. Because they are present in every part of your body, in the major organ and the vital organs. You see, they control every flow of information from your body. So, the paper which I have given her to write earlier, where is it? What is the paper? Hello? Okay. Let me get it. I run. Okay, the first time when I gave her the paper to write something, she wrote something like pharmacogenomics, autism, okay. And the, the latest one, you wrote, you read that, right? You did not read? Very bad transporter. The earlier one, okay. Anyway, the last one, who got this message, you see? So, this is called remote sensing and signaling hypothesis. You see? She can communicate with the remote person over there, but not by direct. She has to communicate between all of the systems over here. There is autonomic, there is cardiovascular, right? There are some histamines, autocoids. So, the transporter system, they cross talk with every system in your body. If there is a defect in one transporter, the effect will be seen in all other transporter system. So please, do not neglect any substance in your research. Just the drug which is directly related through some pathway or some enzyme, it does not mean that they have to be studied in detail. Anything can be a drug, a biomarker for clinical response or therapeutic, I mean like adverse events. Not only within the, yourself, 
You see? From here, transporters play a major role between a mother and a nursing infant. There is a flow of information from the breast milk. From here, when there are flow of substances into the gut, then the host interaction with the microbiome. So I hope you understood by this practical example as well. You see? So now this figure, if you don't understand, that's fine, because I don't want you to understand this. Because we recently performed a microarray experiment doing the association study of 1931 SNPs with the plasma concentration of risperidone and 900 risperidone in autistic children. This for the risperidone, 900 risperidone, the total sum of risperidone and 900 risperidone and this metabolic ratio. The next time, if I got chance to show you the result from this, the further result, why I am not telling you the result from this study right now is that there are certain process for a biomarker to consider it as a biological biomarker and we have only passed up to the level three. We need to still study more level four and level five, right? So once I complete level four, I'll come here again somewhere around and I'll tell you what are these points? And but let me give you one secret. Most of them are transporters that have not at all any relation with the risperidone at all. But like I said, you cannot ignore. Biology is very vast, it's very complex. That's it. You're expecting more from me? Come on. <laughs> okay. So I'd like to thank the CFARM meeting, organizing committee, and a special mention to Professor Wasun Chantatita and Associate Professor Chon Lapat Sukasem. And of course, last but not the least, my laboratory members of Division of Pharmacogenomics and Personalized Medicine at Ramati Body Hospital and Uber Prasad Hospital, where we, where is the research site for us. And thank you. Any questions from the ground? If not, if not, I have a question for you, okay? Please, if you cannot read it from the back, I can speak from here, but I think it's understandable. And I have few, you can think the answer, you see? I have few options as well. So. I don't know whether your answer lies in those options or not. If you want the answer at last, I can give you. If you don't want, that is also perfectly fine. I can give you at a secret location, okay? Okay. Thank you. Come on, don't be shy. You see? I'm not a big researcher, I'm not a professor, so you can fire me with any questions you like. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you can see that uh, even MC, she disappeared. 